This podcast is rated R for restricted. Under 17 requires a company, parent, or adult guardian. Hey guys, Ooh. you know what we just did? What, what did, did we, do? we just do? We just watched all of Martin McDonough's movies, except for yeah, every shorts. single one of them. No, yeah. I watched this short. Oh, I oh, you did. You, you told us no. we were supposed to watch yeah, this short. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, I told <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you reasons. Uh, uh, we watched all of his full length movies, John. Does I, that satisfy I did, you? I did. I did what I was. <laughs> That's told. a better way to put it. <laughs> are you satisfied, John, or are yeah. you sad now? Yeah, I am. I'm just better than you. That's all. Oh, I mean, really? I mean, that's, that's been I mean, given. That goes no saying, one was right? debating yeah. that. Yeah. I, mean. <laughs> I may be louder than you, John, but no one's arguing against you on that one. Come on. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you never disagreed. That's right. <laughs> on that point, it's my turn to go first this week, guys. Uh, true. Woohoo. Um, you but we're watching The Banshees of Inner Sharon. Inner Sharon. Share. I had to write that down. It's got Sharon in the middle there. Sharon. Inner Sharon. Uh, Martin McDonough's most recent movie. This movie is leading the pack in terms of the Golden Globe nominations. We record this like way in the past at this point. It's December still. Just yep. full disclosure. When this episode comes out, I have to assume that this movie is going to be leading the pack for the Oscars too. Oh, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, so going into this movie, my favorite oh, wait, movie so of the year. Okay, so, so, so are we watching? Is, <laughs> Banshees of Inner Sharon. First, oh, first as usual. Is. That's right. If you're interested in the film, don't don't listen to us yes. first. 100 percent watch yeah. it. If you listen to this podcast, it's free on HBO now or yeah. go or, or whatever you, you it's can fucking buy called it now. If you didn't know that. HBO Max. <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> Says John, who won't be able to afford a burrito tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, but I saw Colin Farrell's hey, new you, flick. You okay? gave the money, John. Yeah. Good for you, man. I did. I'm going to buy wanted, the physical copy of this movie when it comes out. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Definitely. This is spoilery territory from here on out. Yep. Uh, anyway, go, go ahead, carry on. I'm still dwelling on this movie. It's a really, yeah. really good movie. And I have a lot of thoughts about a lot of what it does. So, I think I have to start with like where I like to go first, what I can say for sure. This movie is going to win Best Cinematography. It looked fucking amazing. Like the landscape shots. I had a question for you, TC. Is it just Ireland that looks amazing, though? I don't know. Not this good. It's I've been like to it, Ireland. It didn't look this I fucking like, good. But there's the, this is like the one village that's supposed to be like the place to go see Ireland. I don't know. Right? It, yeah, it, no, it, it I looked look it up. It's like good. Right? When they, the, the place they, like, they shot at is like a, that was you know, the Irish village. well high regarded village sure. to go visit. But yeah, I'm sure so when I you're mean, there, I've been to Ireland and I've gone like sightseeing in, in Ireland and it didn't look this good. This movie no, but I think, looks, I think all I was making the correlation there was just like it happens in Iceland. You know how like they shoot stuff in Iceland I sometimes had, so, and like, yes. wow, this looks amazing. So, and you're just like, Iceland looks amazing. When we saw the, uh, the, the Northmen. Uh, yeah. When they shot a lot of it in in Iceland, that movie is shot on location in beautiful areas, and this movie looks so much better. It, it looks fucking amazing. I don't mind the landscape shots. I had thoughts of UTC talking shit on um, fucking Nomad. what Nomad Land, talking right. shit on Magic Hour in movies and beautiful landscape shots. Well, but you, you they use the you can't talk shit. Well, because the they the use the landscape <laughs> shots though to frame shit yes, they didn't they just do. show they're it. in right. the shots like, like they're using the, the frame to like show the the dis, you know the distance between that, the two characters yeah. and it's actually part of the story the shot right yeah. not just like hey let's show this beautiful place because it looks cool right? yes yeah. yeah anyway and all that stuff worked perfectly yeah. this movie i mean i love in bruges i think i might like this movie more i can't tell yet i feel like there's so many i had so many thoughts while watching it and like i while watching it it was very sad and it was funny too, but like it wasn't as sad or as funny as I thought. But that's not like a bad thing, you know? Like I don't need the extreme emotions to yeah. enjoy something. Their relationship was a little confusing. I have questions about a lot of it. I have questions about, you know, the name of the movie, what it means. Like, is it related to the witch character at all? I, I think not, but maybe, you know, that could be a stretch. I mean, she's. Yeah, she's supposed to be death, right? I don't know. Well, she no, just could so be a crazy I, I person. No, so I read was. up on it, and I think that's what it's supposed to be. The, the theory is that she's death. They herald <laughs> the death of, of a banshee like, By definition, whales, right. And, and, uh, and, and that's but, heralding the death of a family member. But basically. I think if it goes so, for that, it doesn't work as well as what well, it does. This, this is more, it's not quite that. It's more about the death of a friendship. 
right? So, that's so like, a- according to McDonough, big, it's but, it's yeah. metaphor for the Irish Civil War. Oh, really? Well, yeah. you have that in the back. So I didn't get that at all. That didn't get me until I read it, it later and was reading about what he. That's not what, what he, he said in the interview I watched, where he oh, was interviewing weird. Taylor Swift and Taylor Swift was interviewing him. Oh, that's oh, weird. at the same time. So I mean, wow. I, I, you know, I, it, it could be one of those things where I was like, "Is this something for the Civil War?" And they're like, "I didn't oh. think about that. That's fucking I guess, shit." I guess, yes, I guess it is. Mar- <laughs> Marty's really alive. Right? No, here. I have no idea because honestly, it does have a metaphor. Like, it's a standoff between people that are no longer friends. Right? That was Ireland. I mean, it, it really sums right? it up well at the end. Like one of their la- <laughs> their last conversation on the it. beach together is where he's talking about. You know, he says, "What is what does he say exactly?" He says something about like. This is like they're talking about this the war over. across you, the way. This isn't over, yeah. right? And they're talking yeah. about their friendship. They're talking about their yeah. being enemies. And they're talking about the war. And they're talking about a lot more than just the one thing. Mm-hmm. And he says, mm-hmm. like, sometimes that's a good thing and walks away. And you're just like, what the fuck? That's that's got to be super deep. Like, there's there's no yeah, way to read too much into this. It doesn't end. He was yeah. just saying that some conflicts never end. And maybe well, and that's why I like the... it's, I think it's the positive stuff, too, which right. is why but that's why the fingers it. coming off. Right. Was like, as you just as you continue to separate, they like lose more and more of themselves. Right. So like he was losing his fingers because he was losing hit like no matter what he was doing, even though he was separating and he was trying to get that, you know, the actual like just get rid of him as a friend. He was actually losing parts of himself along the way. So it wasn't as fruitful as he had hoped, even though he was taking his fingers off. But it, that's essentially what the Civil War is, right? Because they separated, and as they separated, they demolished themselves. So and that's like, not even what Martin McDonough would say he's trying to get at <laughs> so, with the fingers. So I know I, mean, it's I like, like I like that interpretation. What you're I like saying. it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a, so much to this movie, and like when you first but this start is watching, why I it, really like the writing in this. Yeah, one. it's amazing because there's like so many things in, involved. Like just the idea that the donkey was like uh, the a donkey. character, yeah. right? Because the character like that donkey died and it it propelled the whole next problem which was like i'm gonna fucking burn your house down right so like just like you know i I was like why is the donkey in the house for like the good first half of the (laughs) thing and then hilarious and then it it died and i was like oh now it makes sense like i was wondering like where are they going with the donkey you know (laughs) dude i called it too like that that scene was amazing when he's lonely in his house afterwards and he brings the horse in because he's so lonely and there's a cow in the window because the horse was in the window before and the cow is like, oh, if I stand next to the window, maybe he'll let me in. And then the next shot was the cow laying, like standing next to him, laying in right. bed. I mean, that kind of shit is just like uniquely, extremely sad, but also like cute and hilarious at the same time. Well, I, yeah, it's like they took a really like normal, relatable situation when you're upset, you're sad, and you just need what you like around you, right? And they made it like nice because they put it in animals. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so like they, he did that a lot in this where like I, you know, trying to figure out what to how you would write this, I have no clue. Right. Like I'm starting to think, how do you come up with all these weird, weird ancillary things like the donkey and the, and the cow that actually is like this metaphor between the friends and how they act and relate and all this other shit. Right. I would never come up with that. I, I don't know about you guys, but like that, no, I, but I, I remember thinking write. about like, that is yeah, brilliant. No, that is, is brilliant it, shit. It, 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 show, right it shows his loneliness, but it also shows his kindness. Like it really like, it just emphasizes his character over and over. And again. like how yeah. simple he is, but right. like, but while, that, but while he's simple, thing. while he's simple, he's actually really deep thinking. Cause he's really upset that his friend doesn't talk to him anymore. <laughs> I mean, like, and I think I that, that, that was movie. one of the things that I have, I have questions on. It's like, the fact that they start the movie where their relationship ends, it kind of like it works because there are some things I think wouldn't work if you had to be given some realistic backstory between these people. The fact that you don't know lets you excuse a lot of stuff. Right, right. But it's an interesting you know? choice that they don't to not show their friendship first, because that's the way most movies would do this. Right. Yeah. The, um, you would see them laughing and carrying on and you would see the transition the, the conflict that occurs. So you would, you would see like uh, uh, yeah. Gleason's character getting frustrated with all his small talk. And then you, this would, would be the, the beginning breakup. of act two, basically. Yeah. Any right, other right. Story. So you're right. So it is, but, but that, the, the, but that worked here. Perfectly. Well, it works. Yeah. It works yeah. So Cause we don't need to see all that set up to know. Not only that, right. we, but we also like get it. to share um, Colin's puzzlement at first too, yep. which, which is really great. We, we, we're, we're in his shoes. We don't get it. And 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 I, oh, you I, mean Pat Pat 
What how you say his name? Patrick. His name. Patrick. Um, no Is it idea. Colin Farrell's right? Yeah. Colin he's confused. That's what I'm Colin's gonna not confused. Say. I'm just gonna yeah. say Gleason and Colin. Yeah, Gleason and Farrell. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. I mean, the yeah, fact right. that he's a blackout um, drunk and it starts where it starts, it's like anything yeah. could have happened. We don't know whose fault it is, right. so we can't get mad at Brendan Gleason's character, right? It's really right, exactly. hard to get that mad too, at him. But we also get to share Colin's confusion. Yeah. He's but it's <laughs> also a real thing in regular life, right? Like I've gone through people that I thought I'd be friends with for a long time. You never see them again. Yep. Just how it goes, right? And there's really no explanation. Sometimes life just changes. And like, I like the idea that they said it in this tiny little village where like, there's no other people. And there's like, no you're, you're not going to like, yeah, like in where we live, like, okay, in LA, sure. I can see you today and I'll never see you again if I don't want yeah. to. Right. But those villages are so small. Like you literally can't not see them. Right. I mean, I think that that's such a great like idea of just like, you can't get away from this person yet you ignore him. And you were best friends. Like it just, you start there as the, as the audience member and you're like, what is going on here? You still have to go to the same pub. Like that's still where everybody has to hang out. There's nowhere else to go. (laughs) Right. So so y'all still have to go And his sister doesn't want him there. He's like, go to the pub. Damn it. I don't want you in the fucking house. (laughs) He's like, I can't go to the pub. (laughs) I know. I know. Right. Right. He's I like, mean, fine, I'll go to the pub a, and I'll deal with whatever I have to deal with. I'm going to deal with it. Like yeah. What else does he have to do? He can't. He's just got to go to the pub now. It's so a I, brilliant I fucking writer, it writing piece. It really is. And the acting is just, I mean, those two just oh. have such a great chemistry that. I felt so sad because I so feel good. like in In Bruges, because I love them in In Bruges because they're kind of friends. They're like odd mm. couple friends. And in this movie, it's just like, I want them to be friends so bad. Right. And they aren't. And it's just so sad. I'm like. Just be friends, damn it. And like, well, be nicer and then, like, to him. I liked, I liked how they started to show that, like, the reason why he's getting there is because he's getting old and he's he's figuring out that his life's almost done. Yeah. And so he's, like, not wasting any more time. Yeah. He doesn't want any more bullshit. And, like, people get to that point and it's, like, a normal thing. But those two, like, just play off each other so well, whether they're happy together or upset yeah. together. I mean, literally, it, it just seemed like they were they're just so natural when they act together. Um, and the situations they put him in too, like, I don't know how you write some of the scenes in this movie where, where like Colin Farrell is, he comes in, he thinks he's going to like the scene where he busts in and like sits down in the chair. He thinks he's going to get like shit, but then he sits down and yells at him. And you, as an audience member, I'm like, holy shit. He just convinced Brendan Gleeson that like they can be friends again, but then he gets up and leaves and then says, something about like the musician that he lied right, to yeah, or whatever. And, it's all right, right. and then he, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does he, would that have happened anyway? Would he have thrown his fingers away if that last portion of the conversation wouldn't have gone on? No, was Brendan no, Gleeson I, leading him on? Like I, what I, would I, have I happened? Don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I still question. think he was, he wasn't getting anywhere anyway. He I just was never so. going to Dude, get anywhere. I don't know. Yeah, I don't right. He, so. they, they weren't going to get along. It was over. But was the movie is so good that like, him. there's no other yeah. scene where he lies that well, where you don't see that as a characteristic of him, but we don't know that much about them in the first place. So it's like, it's still, it could go either way. Well, no, scene. you feel like you still hope for it, right? Sort of. Yeah. But yeah. And, yeah. I, I mean, was with Colin. I was like, this is going well. You guys are friends again. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Colin. You did it, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Why I did really you liked, tell him about that? Dude, I screamed I at my really TV. Liked, I know. I really liked it. Because he's his friend. He probably used to tell him yeah. stupid shit, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, like, he's... He's still he's bewildered. It's like he's why also, he's not think, his friend. I think he anymore. also felt bad about doing it, and and so he yeah, wanted true. to kind of confess to it. Yeah, I think point. he felt bad yeah. about doing yep. it, and and so he wanted to sort of. He was clear in the air, you know. So let's right. get that out. He's of like, the like, all right, way, I did this. Too. All right, but we're good yeah. now. We're friends. Hey, by the way, yeah, but we're yeah, good. So like, by the way, I fucked up again. But hey, you know, we're good friends now, right? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I just, I, I mean, I really like some of those discussions too. Like when he had his first finger gone and he was like, you know, talking about how he's moving on and all this shit. And then he's like, and I know you see it. And she's like, no, I don't think that way. And he's like, yeah, you do. Yeah. And she just stared at him and she was like, all right, fine. Yeah, I do. Well, yeah. <laughs> Did she, you know, it was just I don't like, know. With her character, she seemed smarter than everyone else in the movie. Like people kept trying to convince her that she was the same. And she's like, no, I'm fucking not. And that led uh, right. her to leave by the end. Cause she's right. like, this entire well, I think village she was is leaving stupid. Anyway, I mean, I think she didn't. I mean, with, well, between it, it the shit easy. on the ground she and this the and that and the other, you know. Too, yeah. I mean, you know, that, that she had her out. Yeah. So, um, 
But yeah, I don't know if I thought I thought once she even had the offer that meant she was going. I don't know if there was a point for her to decide to go after she got the offer. I thought the offer was it that that meant now she has an out. And so I she's going to get out. I, I had the feeling that she wasn't even looking for offers because she wanted to stay with her brother to a certain oh. extent because she mm. loved him and he needed her help. And he needed her. Yeah. Right. So but then she also, you know, he apparently is hard to deal with. And it's it's right. weird because like well, we kind of see it, but not <laughs> as bad as everyone comes off. Right, yeah. like I like when he did the counting thing where he goes one, policeman, yeah. two, <laughs> and then he forgets the third one. <laughs> no, he goes, like, Sorry, over. I had a good one. I had to go to start, start over again. Start it's like, over you're not going to remember it now. Police, and then the second one he forgets, yeah, yeah. it's all gone again. I was like, <laughs> I was laughing hysterically <laughs> at that. Colin, I mean, was, Colin was amazing. And I mean, it was a very different performance from Sam Rockwell in Three Billboards. But somebody who's who's struggling, who who doesn't understand what's going on around them, and is trying to understand. In this character, with Colin's characters, who's a really nice guy, he's not the racist sicko that Sam Rockwell's character was, but still just, he's like, he's not quite getting it. He's trying really hard and he's a, you know, Colin's character being a good guy. It's so well done. It, it's so amazing, like just watching his expressions and. Well, and his friend that was like even more like, you know, the, the kid that gets beat oh, up by his dad. Was really, yeah. He was great. I mean, oh, I he was so yeah. great. He played that like. Kind of yeah. on the spectrum, a little bit confused guy. Perfect. I love like, how they made him like he was. And Ian, this is another Barry McDonough Keegan. thing. Yeah. He's likable, and he's he's yeah. so messed up. But he's even still, when he, he gets he, beat up, he's still happy. No, no. He, when he's <laughs> even when he gets dumped by the girl, he's like, oh yeah, well, I thought that was gonna happen. Okay, <laughs> he's, sitting there, he's sitting there trying to hit on his sister, you know. And, and, and Did you ever see just, your sister naked? He's, he's like, what are terrible. you talking about? <laughs> yeah, or when they're at the dinner table. Oh man, it, uh, yeah, it was it, just it, such good. I mean. Those those scenes, they were like, I, you know, I felt like they all the characters had something to do that actually was part of the plot. Yeah, there weren't there were like no characters in there that didn't have a reason to be in there. You know, it wasn't like they were just filling the room with people. Uh, yeah. Every person we met pushed that story forward somehow, whether it was you know, I even loved. I mean, well, there's here's one character that wasn't, but also added to the movie. The guy who was like basically twins with a bartender. There was the one oh, scene where like that, the guy yeah. at the pub was like right. mirroring the right. whoever the they bartender the, who was an important character. Kind of, but yeah. there was like the the guy, his buddy, his buddy or whatever. Maybe he's twin. I don't know. But like or there was brother, a scene yeah, where they I were just know. like repeating the same words. Yeah, not necessary, yeah. but really funny. But it was they, funny. they were just yeah. like yeah. And, these and, two and are. You know that's been done before, but it was it was still funny. It's. If yeah. it's done well, you know, it's fucking classic. Know, it's fucking well, it, it, goes, it, it, it goes back into that, oh, like, village thing, though, well, right? Because, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, brothers yeah. stay in the same pub forever and they finish each other's sentences. Or also, right? every, everybody's yeah. thinking the same thing, too. Yeah, like, right. everybody in the village is thinking the same things. And, and I like how the they all tell thing. each other off, too. Like, when he was, yeah. she was like, you know, Mozart was in the, the 17th or 18th century, <laughs> not yeah. the 17th century. And then she walks off and he's just like, fuck off <laughs> you know like these are just it's just i think they just did a great job of nailing that like small town village feel slash deep meaning i mean he really did he's a fantastic writer i mean i don't he's amazing yeah this i don't is, know there's nothing else to say really yeah it's i feel like it's rare coming off this movie to just be like having a, an amazing feeling towards it but also having a, a strong feeling of needing to watch it again because you feel mm. like you missed a lot even though yep. at its yep. you know at a high level it is very easy to follow and the relationship yeah, it's not is a, not a fast moving film right. i mean in terms of like pl complicated plot right but it just right. it comes off as like having a lot to say about a lot of things with the way it's put together and the acting and the dialogue and the mm. yeah Music is amazing as well. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Music's Everything in this movie is just top notch. And I remember my sister. She was nice. I remember <laughs> my brother. Yeah. He was nice. I loved oh, it. Yeah, my father, great, my mommy, great, my great mammy. Scene. Yeah. She was nice. He's yeah, like, was a great scene. no one's going to remember them. Yeah. <laughs> and there's I a mean, lot of, that, just great. That's great too because, like, what do you want to do with your right. life? Do you what, want what to, is like, the difference? And, and that's what, it, so I, I did read one interview with McDonough, and that's what he said he struggles with. Like, when when he's like whether what he's doing with his life and if he's doing something meaningful, this goddamn guy who's like, you know, racking up Tony Awards for his Broadway plays while he's also well, and there was some other and, connection with but, the hands too. With um, where I read something where he said like, as a writer, you sometimes you know have nightmares that you've lost your talent, right? Like no. you can't write your your hand no longer writes because you can't 
think of anything, right? So that's also a metaphor for like the writer's process, uh, apparently for him as well. Or like just that's the where, artist, the, the, the yeah, tool right. We're like, you. and that's like while his fingers were getting removed, he was losing more and more of his art, right? Yeah. And that was like all part of his mental problem, right? I mean, not all that shit was in his own head, right? I mean, like none of that. Right. Right? Any of you think you were going to get into a movie where the main plot device was somebody cutting their fingers off no. every time somebody talked no. to them? That is no. fucking weird. No, and right? I still don't quite... When I first found out, I was like, yeah. is that his finger? Yeah. yeah. The fuck? Nikki yeah. was watching it with me and that she like said, all right, I've had enough of this. Oh, oh what? Man. Dude. So and Naomi... then he played the violin and it's just well, stumping. She, she it's also like, had what to get fuck? to bed. She was okay. really tired anyway. So Naomi like, watched this by herself in the theaters and then yeah. I watched it at home and she's like, I'm not going to watch this. Sat down and watched the entire thing again. Oh, yeah. Again, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's I mostly because like the scenery is beautiful and the animals are fucking cute in this movie. Oh, oh, everything is, yeah, yep. all, yeah, you can just watch it for, you could just have the sound off, but the, not that the soundtrack's great too, but just the imagery and just the way they show people and, and the animals, yeah. Are yeah. you fucking stupid? Fact Are you fucking yeah. stupid? So I, I get a question about that because I'm reading some <laughs> Irish crime novels and they say oh. feckin', they write it feckin', and I'm like, they, they're they probably writing it like that so you try to put an accent in your own head and they say like, maybe fucking but like in this movie no, if you, if no, you compare really, it to like in Bruges it's like of course you don't fucking have to like he says with yeah, a U right. and they're supposed yeah, to be right. Irish and in this movie it's hard E. Well this was in the 20s though. But I think it is fecking. Yeah. I think that's... I, no, I, I know, but I, back I think, then, yeah. I think the English no, no. was a little bit different, period, across the board. I, I, yeah. I could be wrong, but I yeah. think even in this movie, sometimes they say fuck. So I, I, think I heard two, feck I think, the whole I time. Yeah. The I entire time. It sounded actual, weird. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, but I don't know. Yeah. But it, it might actually just be two different words, basically. It, it's like heck versus hell. I think it just might be the areas, damn. maybe. Or maybe. The, or I mean, areas. We could just look it up. We could, but let's not do that. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I'd rather just stick to that. I'd rather just keep talking speculate. about the movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so in terms of movies this year, this movie is leading the Golden Globes. It has eight nominations. And I don't know what you guys think about the movies that you've seen this year. I've had like everything everywhere all at once at number one for me for a while. Just like there's nothing that can mm-hmm. be better than that. This movie okay. easily yeah. in terms of like being more of a better candidate for a best picture type of thing in terms of all the previous criteria and what they normally do, this one's going to win, I think. <laughs> this is a very artsy film to me, it seems. like. It's I mean, it's a realistic bit, I mean, film I mean, with, way, like, normal but, people shit. You yeah. know, it's not superhuman. It's not sci-fi. It doesn't have all those elements, and it doesn't need it. You almost can't even compare it to it, this. It's well, not as fantastic, but, it, but it, it, it seems to... It, to me, it shares stuff with, like, um, like the Green Knight and the Northmen. I mean, yep. it, it, it because... Because it's Barry Keegan's its, in the Green Knight too. I know, right? Well, there you go. But but the I, just the way that it treats the environments um, and the pacing of it, I don't know. It, it's weird because normally when we, we when we've talked about that kind of film that we like, which is just, but usually those films are weird, right, and sort of fantastical. So it's kind of interesting that this film. This one is too, though. I think it somehow well, like yeah. melds like the imagery is so it, it's real, but it looks like a fantasy movie almost. It, it, well, it is, and also things are like that. He cuts off his fingers and his hand is a fantastical element. I came. Right? I, I mean, was just not ready for that. I'm gonna. There just was honestly that. there was one scene in this movie. There was one scene that I kind of got knocked out, and it was the scene where he cut all of his fingers off, and he was directing yeah. the fucking violin people. Right. And I was like, right. what the fuck is going on here? Like, I was yeah. totally in this movie as a realistic drama, and this scene is a joke, right? This is this is not he's realistic. Just kind of, There's no way this would ever happen. You probably in the happen. hospital once, you, once you've cut off he your was hands. Bleeding. I mean, the he idea that he was just walking around with, like, no yeah. big deal. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, like, he didn't everybody feel else shit. is like, no big deal, right? I was he's like, so into true. it that I was on board, even when he didn't have any bandages on his newly cut fingers walking down right, the street. Right, right. I was like, fine. We're going here? That's fine. But as soon as he had, like, the violin in his hand, shaking his it at his hand. students, and it was spraying blood, I was like, I don't know, movie. What the hell is this? Right. But that was it. I, that was right. literally yeah. it. I mean, I mean fair. yeah. Did you guys? Did that stand out to you as well? Or was well, that- I, I think I think even the simple finger cutting off was was problematic to me. It just seemed too fantastical in how it happened that somebody would do it. And he, he just would, like he, walks off. That, that he would yeah. carry like, through with it. Right? No big deal. Is my finger? At that point, <laughs> I was already like, okay, this this isn't. And, and so I wasn't surprised. This isn't as serious of a drama as it comes off as. In the sense, right? right? It's, it's becoming more of a, a fairy tale or something like that. It's starting to be more, more like a folklore. And, and then, well, yeah. yeah, and then it's more. And I like bought that, on that, as soon as I, I had the same thought, and I bought onto it immediately. 
Yeah. That's what yeah. I did. It's like, this is more Green Knight territory or whatever. Yeah. This is like, now we're getting into that kind of. Because we're, we're did you see those bit. shears? How do you even work right. those fucking oh, scissors? I don't know. But they <laughs> looked like fucking the badass when they table. were on the <laughs> table, right? It looked badass when it was on the table. They were so wide. What are they made for? Uh, pruning, maybe shearing. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> By the way, I did look it up. So feck is a lesser version of fuck. Ah, so really? it is a two different words. So okay. in Wikipedia says it's like a less serious alternative to fuck. Okay. So in Irish, English. Interesting. Good to know. Nice. Thanks, John. Anyway. Yes. Couldn't help it. Sorry. Keep your fingers in the no, keyboard, John. Yeah. Keep that information coming. That's right. Let's Got learn. Right Guys, Let's second learn damn it. I'm your man on the street. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. Are you sick? I'm still, I mean, yes. Oh. Uh, I've been like day quilled up all week and I'm all jittery now. Oh. So, yeah. Well, you sound great, John. You sound Thank just you. fine. I, I, I feel terrible. We're just so used to you being sick that you sound just normal. <laughs> you don't look terrible, know, right? John. You look normal, <laughs> which might Especially be terrible. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. By hey. the way, old, old Colin Farrell looks a little like Scott Bakula. I'll just leave that there. Count Dracula? Scott Bakula, the guy from Quantum Leap. Who? Scott, I'm going to look him up. I don't know who that How do you is, spell yeah. Bakula? Don't you know? Uh, well, it was, it was made before your guys' time. B A K U L. Disagreed, at least from the immediate images oh, I'm seeing. A little bit. When I first a saw him, I, I didn't. I, I haven't seen Colin. Farrell I have questions. For a Does while. he have like makeup on his cheeks, or is he just yeah, really so. old now? No, he He's, doesn't look like that. You person. saw him recently, right? Oh, yeah. He doesn't look like that in person. Yeah. He looks just as perfect <laughs> yeah, okay. as he always did. saw yeah. him at a Dave Matthews concert. He was yeah, really fucking in line, line. waiting for beer. He's still yeah, looking was, great. He and then I was a back. box seat away from him, and I kept looking at him like, oh my God, he is really that good looking. That yeah. motherfucker. You Fuck know? you, Carl <laughs> Farrell, you handsome son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, you handsome son of a bitch with your perfect family and all your money. Yeah, I wish you the fame. best with yeah, all right. of your career, you fucking asshole. Yeah, that was like one of those things. everything that you have. It's like one of those things where you know you're bringing them down because you're jealous as fuck. Yeah, and he's such a uh, good guy. He'd probably oh, understand. Oh, and he was having such a normal conversation with two two women behind him when he was with his wife. Like they were just waiting for beer, having a conversation about fuck all. Like didn't matter, right? And he was just being normal. Yeah. And yeah, he doesn't look like he did on this. He yeah. has yeah, significant amount of makeup. Okay. Or, it looked a little or weird. they made him gain some weight for the film. Look at Zac Efron. It looked Have like you his seen skin that motherfucker? Have you seen Zac right. Efron no. lately? Dude's got, dude jacked up to the point where he's a, a wrestler. That's maybe, the new movie. I, I think he's that's, in. That's, that's a smart I, move. He's, I, I, I think, I, yeah, he's huge. I mean, the guy might as well look like not real. fucking. It's, it's real, mm -hmm. my man. He did all that. They bulked him up for that role. For what role? That looks like he's, he's a wrestler. That one. He's a he wrestler. Looks like, he looks oh, all oh, roided yeah, in the belly. Oh, yeah, he must have been. I, I think they, oh, they really? roided him up for sure. Because I don't see how you gain that much weight. And that much muscle. And he was yeah. never that big. Holy no. fuck. He's always been like in good shape, but like that is some crazy shit. That's stupid. Right? He's got to yeah. be doing drugs. Uh, well, uh, I mean, dude, that's steroids. a big wrestler movie. It's a huge movie. It's, you know, he's. Anyway, Sacrifice your body. Weird. Do what you I, gotta I imagine, do. I imagine that, 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 that oh, Colin wow. probably put on some weight because when I saw him, well, he was skinny. It's a smart move because I, I think it might have been a harder to, to make his character believable if he was just fucking gorgeous. Uh, True, because you know, I mean, you're I, supposed I, to be like a lower level village guy in, yeah. in Ireland. Yeah, right. Well, he, I didn't recognize him at first. We were we were both like, "Is that is that Colin Farrell?" I know he's in this movie, but we didn't quite recognize him. I mean, it's it's you know, it's part of the production, right? The budget all gets put in. They get their fucking personal trainers. They do all the stuff. Sure. It's all paid for. It's all they got to do is show up and do it. I like that. I'd be the personal trainer that helps you get fat. All right. You get up. All right, two donuts. Two. I mean, you know those guys, those guys exist. That must be a oh, hell I'm of a job you know. in Hollywood, yeah, yeah, right? Be like, yeah, like I, yeah, I the guy. You get fat today. You gotta get fat. You right gotta here. eat this fucking shit, right? <laughs> you gotta, come on. <laughs> That's and right. they probably have tricks too. It's probably not like fried chicken and donuts. It's probably something weird. Know, I'm it's sure like, it's. I'm sure it's, it's well straight, controlled. Because you have to be careful with the body too, like right? Protein stuff. Yeah, you can't just do shit like that to the body if you're not very careful. I think because you might lose, might kill somebody. Yeah. Well, mental stuff changes the whole thing. Your yeah. hormones, all that shit changes. And that's uh, why Christian Bale is the best actor ever. Yeah, but uh, he can act I think through he that look, kind of weird brain change. Was it you know? Christian Bale or wasn't it like, what's his name? No, he did that. He bulked. Didn't he just go skinny for a couple of Oh, dude. He, he, went, uh, he went from uh, the, the Machinist or something. He did the Machinist yeah. between Batman Begins and American Psycho. Yeah, and he was his... ripped in both. Batman Begins and American Psycho, and then he did The Machinist, and then he did The Fighter, and then he got ripped again, and then he got fat for uh, whatever the fuck that movie was, and now he's skinny again. Right. 
guys, out of control. Yeah. He's going to have I a mean, attack. it's a hell of a life, but they make Best good actor money. ever. You could say it for that guy. Easily. What? Just because he's willing to gain or lose weight? Yeah. I mean, putting his they, okay. literal life on the line his entire life. He could have a heart for, attack from doing for, what he's doing any day. Batman. He probably could. You're not wrong. <laughs> Although I would imagine. You liked they the have first <laughs> Batman, John. <Fuck>. Doctors. <laughs> You liked it. Batman Begins is a good movie. You said it's so. All right. I'm pretty it's sure right. we have recorded audio of you saying We do, that. and I didn't love it as much as you did. But you liked it. That's all I'm saying. I thought it was it okay. Was good. Was like, it, was the best, it, was, it was the best Christopher Nolan movie you've ever seen, I'm pretty it, sure. It probably is, yeah. and that's, yeah. Saying something. Yes. But not saying anything at all. No. <laughs> so, John, you kind of, I, I think TC yeah. and I talked a lot about this movie. You got any extra thoughts? What do you think? I no, I I probably put in what I did already. I I don't know what to think about the film. I'm sorry. I really understand what you're saying when you're like you just kind of want to think about this and see it again. Because I, I I was just struck by how uh, I mean it, it's it's clearly a McDonald's film, but but it's very it, it does not nearly have the lots of things going on with lots of characters, lots of action and stuff, and or or at least lots of different kinds of interactions between different characters. It's much more focused. Uh, and and a lot slower because of that too. Um, so so it, it seemed like, but I not was in a bad way, right? You gotta do no, the no, last no. tricks. Not in a yeah, bad I way didn't feel but, like but, bored. It was just no, a every slow pace. single second yeah. I was engaged in this. Right. This was different. This was yeah. I, but I, I really I, do I, think a lot of that is the actors. Yeah, I mean the well, two of them can just they just pace themselves I mean, well was, when they say their lines. It was literally right? everything. Like the way yeah. the movie yeah. moves is just. With the music like, and the editing seemed, and the, the yeah, scenery and the acting. Yeah, they just seem to match the, the dialogue delivery to the editing. And, right. like, yeah. and you know, they, they just, it just all, like, right. it's it just really, all good. It, I mean, I don't know what else to think, say. Think yeah. about how many right. times you see somebody <laughs> approaching a house or the bar in this film. And it's it's good to watch. But yep. you're seeing it. Oh, he's going down to the same house again. And they're going to show it. Not all of it, but they're really going to show you the approach scene or approaching the bar. Well, I feel like we got a good idea of how the village was right with because all that's, that, yeah you know it, it also gives you the sense of the pace of life there too like, true, like, you're, true, like true. everybody's just like okay well, i'm going down the pub or i'm going to go see if colm's in because i'm going to invite him to the pub and again that could be really boring and it's yeah not. it should be really um, boring but it's not right but they show it because then it gives you this sense of being in the village kind of too at the right. same time and it doesn't bore you even though it's probably pretty goddamn boring being in the village so and i, I think we've talked about this anytime you know, a film gives us a sense of being in a place, whether it's some of the French films that we've liked or like the Iranian director that we like too. I can't remember his name. Um, crap. The anyway, hero director. Yeah. I forget his name. Too, yeah. You know what right I mean? Um, what are those films? The uh, a hero the, and a separation. Uh, yeah. Yep. Right, yep. Right. A hero, uh, Oscar yeah. Farhadi. Yes. The director. Thank you. Oh. Um, thanks. I just don't like, don't like to say that guy, you know. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so you could on the you could do the keyboard thing too. Yeah, um, I did the keyboard thing. Look at me. On the street, Denny. Guys, we're um, we're children of the modern age. That's right. Um <laughs> but, but being put in a place and a time that we're not as familiar with is great. And and the film just does that. It just you're just immersed there. You're just like there. You're you're seeing everything that's going on. They don't pour beer from you know, taps, it's coming from these bottles, and it's just I all felt done very bad about I mean, and, that that was honestly like a huge factor of how remote this town seemed right it's like mm. you can't even go to the store and buy beer and drink beer at your house the only place right. you can buy beer at in the entire fucking island is this pub that's the only yeah. place and there's it's not like good tap beer with like homebrew or whatever like it's not local shit it's like bottled and shipped over in a boat and that's what they have and the guy cracks right. the top open and pours it into a cup and that's your only option that's your, right. that's that's your drink right yep and so anyway I, I think all of that is is just so well done um so yeah, I, I, but I, I still walk away from the film going, I'm not sure. Maybe there's other metaphors that you're talking about or allegories or whatever the hell TC that you're talking about in terms of the Civil War or whatever. But I just yeah. thought also, I mean, the idea about their friendship and the idea of somebody having enough of somebody and the person who's uh, been had enough of doesn't, is not willing, you know, just that. that, that Isn't that Whether it, it's a friendship or a relationship is it? I, I mean, mean in, in real life, it's not, but in film or in like storytelling, right, really, right. it kind of is because it kinda, is like a, it's like way. a romantic breakup, but it's not romantic. Right, right. It's just a and, friendship. And it's not about the plot. It's it's not like there's any kind of plot device here in the sense of it's that right from the beginning. You know, um, Gleason's characters had enough of Colin. 
That's it. That's the whole thing, right? And Colin can't understand it. Colin can't, he can't accept it either. Well, I get, I, that's not fair to say. Then there's the breaking point where, okay, well, if they can't be friends and they have to be enemies. Then there's this breaking point. Um, well, so because it's, well, it's if you think about it, it like we, we only see what Colin did shitty, which was like, got his fingers off and then have the donkey die. Right? Like we oh, don't get to see then. what. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. right. Well, yeah. yeah, we don't get to but see we kind the, of do, the other though. one. We do. Whoa. Because, I mean, we see him drunk. I feel like the scene where he goes and... Oh, when he's on the whiskey. When he's on the whiskey. Like, we see him when he's drunk. Like, I don't think that he's that bad. Because he woke up and he's like, what did I do? Was it terrible? And he's yeah, like, no, you're good. actually pretty sweet. Like, you are a nice guy. Like, you always are. He's just a, like... I feel like that scene a, was telling me. I think he's just a simpleton, right? Yeah. He's just that's a simpleton. And, and that's not what... that Brendan Gleeson wanted to write music and... He saw he's he's also a jackass. Like his character is an asshole. So he's like, I want to write music. I don't know how to get rid of this guy. I just right. need to cut it off clean because otherwise I'm not gonna I don't know how else to do this. And I just that, need not, to go home and write he, music. He wants to write music. He's miserable. He's he's suffering. Yeah. He's he, you know, like the, the He's end of life. Of he's he's upset. Yeah, he doesn't he didn't do yeah, what he, he wants. He, he yeah, is, right. Yeah, he is feeling like his life is meaningless and he doesn't right. know what to do about that. And he's he thinks, well, I need to, I need to spend my time with music, and this guy who's who will just talk, him and I will just talk, or I'll sit and listen to him for hours on end. And so there I'm, was that's another theory. Anything. There was another theory too that the um, the fingers being cut off was actually Gleason's character's way out from realizing that he was never going to be successful at music. So if he cuts all his fingers off, well, then guess what? He's got an excuse today that he never made it into anything with music long term because he doesn't have fingers anymore. Do you want to hear what Mark so McDonough's theory was? There was like was? an interesting a couple yeah. theories floating around. Do you want to hear oh. the, the yeah. actual reason for it? He thought sure. it was a non-threatening way to threaten suicide. He was saying that uh, Brendan hmm. Gleeson's character was suicidal to the point where he didn't want to say it out loud. But he was and, and, and going to start it. cutting. Yeah, he couldn't face couldn't it. Like, face but he, it. he was, wanted to kill himself. Right. He didn't want to kill himself, but he wanted to stop something in his life. So that was the the least aggressive thing he right. could do. That was yeah. the same Short of realm. killing himself. Yeah. Of yeah. So that was that huh. was Martin McDonough's idea of why he. I mean, there's so things. and what's good about that idea is that it it can mean so many different things. Yes. Yeah. And like the fact that he was able to weave it in the story where like you just can kind of keep your own theories going and it still makes sense. And the overall like point of the film still comes across, right? Yep. These guys aren't friends anymore. But and there's sure like this crazy Martin, shit like, about the fucking about fingers. I don't know, man. The fingers, I, like the more I think about it, I'm just like, I was shocked when I first <laughs> happened. And now the like even now when we talk about it, I'm like, yeah, what the fuck, man? The fingers. <laughs> right? like, it's just It's so weird how the fingers yeah. kind of live outside the drama of the rest of the movie, right? Because yeah. Yeah. the fingers are yeah. a major, major plot point. Like the the title of the movie could have been called I'm cutting off my fingers or something like that. It's that important to the movie. What you're getting is just a serious drama. Like it's a breakup story between friends. Like going back right. to that again. Right. Even though there's yeah. all these other things, there's like, there's animals in this movie. There's, right. I mean, there's animals and there's war in the background. And then there's the fingers cutting off. But this movie is at its core, just like a, a small friendship conflict yeah. is all it yeah, is. But, but the, the thing is, is that the fingers add this fantastical element to it. It almost like everything elevates else does. that beyond that. Yeah. No, but, it all like, works perfectly together. It kind of works. Yeah. yeah. And it definitely augments his depression, right? Like the idea that like you can see he's depressed, you can hear he's depressed, then he's cutting his fingers off. This guy's well, fucked, I know. right? But, like, but it's, it's, it's weird. It's it still like in a way exists outside the movie or it pulls the movie in a different direction. It's not mm. bad necessarily, but it is. I think it, it elevates the movie, it, John. It, yeah, think? Well, yeah. Gets, yeah, I think so, but it makes it something else. Because I mean, and, I think and, that this movie would be a lot like, what was the name of that movie where it was the... People on an island, it was like a lesbian relationship, and it was a slow, slow drama. Oh, um... um oh, something with it, it fire. Was, um, the, yeah, um... We watched this in really the good. podcast, DC. It we, was a good movie. Oh, boy. Oh, um, boy. Fuck, we should probably look this up. But I thought that this <laughs> you movie... You should never let... That should never yeah, be I know, a thing I don't know for why. me. I'm just like, <laughs> I'll just kick TC out of the Zoom chat yeah, whenever yeah, I ask right. questions like that. Portrait of a lady on fire. Portrait of a lady on fire. Portrait of a lady on fire. Yes. This movie could have been like that, and that movie was good. But I don't yes. think it comes close to this, right? No, like the, the fact that, that there's all these other components. For, right, in it. that movie went more for realism, and that's what I'm saying. Like when we talk about those, art, I, mean, I don't want a better word than artsy. But, but I, I'm agree. I mean, artsy, artsy is is a, is a real description. I, I agree. Yeah, I would but, also but, classify but this. But I'm as saying artsy. it's where it get, it starts going into that territory of those artsy films that we do love. Um, but but what's so almost maybe somewhat unique about this film 
is that it, it, it has both, it has its one foot in each of these sorts of things. And one, one side it, it, and for the majority of this film, it's this realistic, beautiful, but, but it's focus on the environment is kind of has that artsy component to it. And then it adds this fantastical component of, of the fingers being cut off and the way that's handled. And then that, that like puts it in this other realm too, more in the artsy realm. And I, I think it's just, and, and it leaves me like, like I feel unsettled by it. Like I'm not like, you could say, I, you know, if you want to go this, I wouldn't really cut off his fingers or that wouldn't really happen. And, and everybody else would be like, all right, we're sending you to the hospital. We're putting you on the boat or whatever. I mean, there, if you want to go that route of like, what would you realistically do and how would people realistically react? Th- I you had, a, you have to have, that's great about this movie. Cause I had a moment with myself when that happened. And I think everyone would in this movie, yeah. it's like, am I along for the ride or not? And I had to, right, like, right, right. I talked to my inner self and I was like, all right, this <laughs> Denny, movie, all right, Denny, yeah, no, let's seriously, Denny. <laughs> like you do. Cause I thought this movie yeah, was going yeah, in yeah, what, a yeah, serious okay, direction, Denny, look. <laughs> but then I had to be like, all right, all right inner Denny, we're going on a ride. Okay. <laughs> Are we going with Marty on this? We're going with we Marty. Going let's with Marty fucking hop on, on the little boat, dude. <laughs> See where hey, he Marty's to leaving. Us. We either got to make a choice. He's going and yeah, we got to follow or Why we got to give I? up. So far, yeah. this movie's been right. great. Why wouldn't and I trust so far, him? Let's and fucking so go. This guy, I mean, like, look at this guy. We know this guy is a fantastic writer. Let's see where he wants to take us, right? Yes. So we, yes. Yeah, right. So, yes. but, but I, I think that that, I, and I think and it only and pays off if you go on. And I was oh, yeah. on the ride, except for that you, one yeah, scene right. that could, I mentioned. You could fold your hands like, and go, no one never happened. You would never do that. Right. And then you're off the boat, right? right. And, then, and then the rest of the movie, you could just say, this is stupid or yeah. whatever. You know, See, yeah, I don't even think I had those. Movie. Not even all the rest of the movie. A very small portion right, right. of the rest of the well, movie. Well, yeah, you right? take those portions because you could still appreciate a lot of other things. Yeah. Is there another movie like this in terms of, in terms of doing that? I, don't I mean, know. a lot of movies try this and they fail a lot, I think. Because usually you start with like the Green Knight, you start with the idea that it's going to be fantasy anyway. Right? Oh yeah, you're good. No, that's what I'm saying. Like the artsy films, it's like, this is fucking, you're going to know right from the moment the credits start or don't start or whatever weird thing happens right at the beginning. You're like, oh, we're in artsy territory here. You I know, mean, you use know. the word restrained and focused. I, would, I mean, and I it's feel almost like that's like, the reason this movie works so well. Because it's usually almost when like you, abstract. Yeah. yeah. You usually know, when you, I, when you take the turn of awesome. like, I'm going to make this heavy drama that I spent so long making realistic and real. And I'm going to mm. go somewhere weird with it. I'm just going to keep going weird with it because that's what I want to mm. do. I want to go. And I wouldn't weird even call it weird. Oh, oh and you're I would just yeah. call it like it's only like weird or, or fantastical. It's, it's, it's or, weird in the sense, like because because people do, you know, mutilate themselves for a variety of reasons, right? Not cut their fingers off, but the idea of like self harm is is a thing. So like I bought enough of like okay, this might be just a crazy just a little bit a little bit too far but i wouldn't call it weird like weird would have been like there's a ghost floating around next yeah, to them I know. no but there was you know a ghost I mean? there was a ghost in this movie there was but a not fucking like throughout witch. <laughs> the witch the old lady was death right i, I mean death, that's what i'm saying this coming. movie is weird because yeah. it's like extremely restrained fantasy is what it seemed like yeah, yeah that's, that's a good way to put it i like that that's a good way to put it but yeah, yeah, right. the last, literally fantasy. the last shot of the movie right. Was, it's a good way to put it. So on the left hand side, you get the back of the witch who hadn't been in the movie for like a half an hour at that point. Right. Is sitting on the fucking hill looking at the beach where Brendan Gleason's house is. It's burned, it's smoking. Brendan Gleason's standing on the beach looking to the right where you thought Colin Farrow was. You think that Colin Farrow is already up the hill, but he's not. He's behind the witch's back and he pops out from behind her and starts walking. And then the movie fucking ends. <laughs> That's. I mean, what is Abstract. that? Why would they yeah. stop the movie with the witch character? Right? Why because is she even in death. the movie? How did she find out about coming. Mary Keegan? Right. Like, there's these, these questions I have She's, about it. Like, she found the policeman's son. And she didn't, mm-hmm. I mean, it's she death. didn't pull him out of the water. He was still in the water. She, like, left him in the water. The, the water's flowing. He would have ran down the river. There's something magical going on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she brings it, him there. It, it feels and like she, Shakespearean ish. It yeah. feels like you know. It yeah, feels like that's of, yes, yes, yes. Um, it does. So it, it, I mean, it maybe is. that's kind of like where he pulls from. I mean, it dabbles in the Green you Knight know? territory, where it's like yeah. this is weird. That's why I'm saying the word weird because it's like, I guess yeah, weird maybe is a, the word. It's a little yeah, dreamy, right. is what it is. Yeah. Dreamy is another good way to put it. Doesn't it doesn't like it. Doesn't it feels so real a lot of the time? And then some scenes you're just like, this is. This doesn't so seem very real, like, but it's still based in the real world. So, like, how do I feel about this? I don't know. I still really like it, but like, what the fuck is he going for here? What is this supposed yeah. to mean? Why do they choose yep. to do it this way? And I think it's because it's open for interpretation, but it still makes sense, and that's fucking what people love about 
movies. Yeah. <laughs> that's know, why I love this to, movie. This movie is fucking They get to great. settle up yeah. with what they think it is. And like, then they have discussions and they're all different. Everyone's like, wow, this fucking movie rocks. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, when you've got those fucking Michael Bay movies, it's like, okay, chase scene into fucking chase scene into fucking blow up into chase scene into blow up. You got to know what's Fox's coming next. Ass Let me guess. This shot. Someone's going to fly in a helicopter and it's going to blow up. Right. Like we know it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this kind of shit, we can we could talk about this thing for hours and yeah. hours and hours and probably never like we would never disagree about the interpretation because it could mean so yep. many different things. I yep. just I love it. It's yeah. great. It's fucking great. Good job, McDonough. Good job. Did you guys have a, yeah, pal. Did you guys have a scene? So I was kind of giggling a lot. I was questioning myself whether or not I should be laughing at a lot of the scenes, but I was uh-huh. like laughing. But there was one scene where I was laughing hard and Naomi was laughing really hard too. Like one. Oh, really? Which one? Mm. The scene where he I lied to the know. fucking musician where he talked about how oh. his mother got oh, killed oh, by oh, a he's red truck driver. Dead. And he's yeah, like, yeah, well, that's yeah, so rude. He's yeah. like, that's not my boss. If it's like, his bastards, I'm going to kill him. And he's like, <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Is it the same guy? And Colin's like, oh, his character's like, oh, shit. I really oh, yeah, every- didn't want to do this. Yeah, everybody gets hit by <laughs> yeah. a red van every once in a while, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. That was, it was just funny. completely it was ridiculous. Funny. And like he just kept uh, like no, changing said, the story based on truck. every he said, reaction. He said the bread, bread truck. Bread truck. The bread truck. Oh, yeah, bread yeah, truck. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 I thought no, was that great. was yeah. pretty funny. I, I was I was like third, I was like I didn't know where this film was going to go. And I was like happily amused for like the first like twenty minutes or so where they're just like all are you having a row? We're not having a row. Are we having a row? You look like you're having a row. Maybe we are. Irish people talk like that. They just repeat each other. Know, what is it? it Why do they do it. that? I don't know. <laughs> TC, Uh-oh. I'm Irish. Why do they do that? I don't fucking know. Because we're all fucking, I don't know. Idiots? That's a good question. That's a good, yeah, idiots? I think it's because we're all dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We live in a <laughs> so tiny like, cold island. Why the fuck do like, we do, do that? Do you know the answer? Stupid. It's like, I don't know the answer. Do you know the answer? never listening to anybody, so you have to say everything two or three times. But I just, the exchanges, I love, and I did read some of the script, and again, everything's pretty much word for word. You know, even like, you know, the, the pauses and stuff are there and, and it's just great. I, I, I just love to that, like that first 25 minutes, I was just like all happy going, but worried because I didn't know where this was going to go. And knowing McDonough, something interesting was probably going to happen that was going to probably put some drama on things. You had that feeling the first half. I honestly, when he started cutting his fingers off, that's when I remembered I was watching a McDonough movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, seriously, I was like, oh, he's going a different direction here. He's going hard drama. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, and for all I knew, you know, there's going to be some bloody massacre at the end. For all you know, yeah. I mean, I didn't know where, where I knew he would he would go with surprising directions just to put his characters in the situations he wanted. Yeah. So, yeah, but it, it's still so it's still in that sense turned out Martin to be McDonough. small and focused, which was surprising. Like you said, Denny, too, I think one thing you were, you were saying earlier, too, is once people leap into the fantastical, then they just keep heading in that direction, too. You know, but they didn't. They just had these small elements that were there but you could have been like oh he chops his fingers off and then he chops his arm off and they or whatever or then the angels come or the ghost really does show and is a real ghost and it was so restrained though like when he when he threatened so he's like one at a time but then at one point he's like i'll do all four of the rest on this hand i'm like no that's way too much and then he did it i'm like oh my god fuck and that seemed extreme you know like but like an arm would have been normal in another movie or something and that would have not felt shocking yeah so, uh, yeah, wow. it's, it's, uh, I mean, it, yeah, it, I mean, this is a masterpiece. This is 20 I mean, years of, of, you know, work. I agree. And I, that's why I want to watch <laughs> it again, mean, really. because I feel like going, you know, I'm not sure I have hyperbole, but, uh, I feel like I've been hyperbolic. I think it deserves it. You know, I don't know yet. Cause I've only seen it once. This is the kind of movie I'm going to watch over and over again to try to convince myself that it does One deserve it, other. but I'm pretty fucking yeah. sure it does. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, he's just, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, the guy's clearly a writer. Just, that's him forever, right? Yeah. I mean, the, I was just reading that he wrote seven plays in ten months. Who the fuck's able this to do that? This was the final trilogy. He wrote two. That's insane. He wrote two plays that are based on Irish islands, and this was the trilogy ender for two ah, other plays. So, like, this is a standalone movie, but, like, he wrote two so other this, plays. So this really is like a long-standing work of yeah. that's been happening for years that just built. And he talks awesome. a lot about. So there's a, a variety. Can I go into trivia now? Is that cool? Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. There's a variety interview with him and Taylor Swift, and it's a the idea is they interview each other, sort of. So Taylor Swift is a director as well. She directs her own music videos, and she's like 
like a Denise rock star is doing at her it. own film soon. Yeah, like, she's going to do her own feature film soon. So she's it's it was a pretty good dynamic. Um, she asked a lot of questions to him, and he's a huge fan of hers, etc. Oh, but wow. so in a play, apparently, if you write a play, he's never directed a play once. That was surprising to me. Huh. If you if you write a play in that world, if you're the writer, you get to be there for the uh, casting. You get to be there for the direction. They they have you on set to ask you questions. Like some movies do that where they have the writer on set, but that seems pretty fucking rare in our experience, I feel like, and all the trivia we've had. I think the the, the only time it happens now is when the writer is the director. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because it used to or be. Or you more have like, like a really good director that wants the writer. Or like there, the wants director to make a really and the writer is a team, right? Like they're a team already. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. The writer is it's like this is a um, you know, a very well known book and it's or or it's like a war book or something. They're 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 bringing some the writer's almost kind of an expert too. So they're Yeah, yeah well I hate John's to say it, about the reason, Boot. Boot. The reason yeah, yeah. why this about. happens though now is because, you know, scripts are bought and then once they're owned by someone else, they're well, that's created. true. They're so, not Hollywoodized too. Right. So like you're not bringing that writer back on set because yeah. you've already because they just know the they're gonna, he's gonna disagree anyway. So Yeah, well no, he doesn't he doesn't own the script anymore. Oh, he's, he wrote yeah. the script, but he doesn't own yeah. it. So they so, can't, he got accustomed to writing scripts with people in mind as a screenwriter, and that's worked out a lot for him. Mm-hmm. Being there for casting works out for him. Being there on set, letting people know what his thoughts were when he wrote the script has worked out. Like, every, like he's a successful guy, and he's, he sees reasons why that's happened. And mm-hmm. he knows that in movies, he had, oh, I forget exactly what he said. I can pull it up. But he basically said, in Hollywood, for movies, writers are shit. They are <laughs> the fucking scum. They, he called them scum. Everyone thinks of writers as scum. They are the lowest yep. mm. tier of people that work on a movie, which is right. really fucking sad. It's it's the opposite of what it should be. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But he he realized that, and he's like, all right, so if I want to do a movie or be in Hollywood at all outside of this play stuff, I'll have to direct too. Yep. Because like right. otherwise, yeah. you won't have the power. Otherwise, you won't control it. Right. I mean, that's what Billy Wilder yeah. did too, right? I, I mean, and, and was it Kubrick too? That's no, no that's in, that's uh, pretty much Kubrick, that's but, pretty much how it goes um, now. I think that's the re, you know they and people hire you based on what you're able to accomplish in those two realms and what kind of characters you build that build in the actors and then the actors that they bring in build in the finance and then so on and so on and so on and so on. It's all fucking circle jerk city. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the writers the writers don't um, get the the really the uh, they don't get the the love that they should really. But then again, writing, I mean, you can sit here in your room and you write and then like, you know, the, the next step is really all the hard part. Like, okay, now we got the writing done. We got to do the line producing. I mean, you for the, like, the how do we figure out the, what we're going to do? What, yeah, yeah, we got the below the line production costs. We got the above the line, you know, producer or actor costs, like all that stuff, right? Like the writers, they wrote the story, but there's so much more after the writing mm. that goes on to actually get the film to fruition. So it's a fucked up business. But, you know, it's cool if you're doing it, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, like, I think it sucks for people that want to get into business, but, like, don't end up getting the, you know, the, the who you know part ever. Yeah. Because that's really most of what this gets to. Uh, or you're, like, someone like Marty who's written all these plays, right? Like, you have all this, you have something he's, that you're bringing to the table. He's also an extremely, extremely smart dude. Like, in, in, Is he? I th- I mean I think so. I've seen a lot of interviews with him, and he comes off as extremely aware of uh, what he's going for. Like he succeeds in what he's going for a hundred percent of the time, from what I've seen. Um, he knows what he's going for. He knows what his public perception is. The only thing I've ever seen him doubt himself on was he he's surprised at how successful this movie is becoming because he thought mm-hmm. it was going to be like a smaller movie. He's like people like me for my comedy, people like me for the ensemble pieces, and this was like a smaller, more intimate movie. And I'm surprised. That well, you know why, right? It's getting. I'm sure the reason why is because the fucking assholes around them are like, well, look, this isn't going to bring in X amount of dollars, right? And so, like, that shit gets in your head after yep. a while, right? Like, okay, mm-hmm. this is a lower this is a lower tier movie. It's an indie type <laughs> film. No one's going to give it that much weight, but I'll have Colin Farrell and, you know, Gleason in it. So there we go. That brings in X amount of money, but, like, it's still not $100 million budget money. Nope. Right? So, like, right. I can see, like, you, you, you're building this out. And, like, this these types of things are hard to get off the ground, I think, for most writers. Because this isn't bringing the money most of the time. It might not. If you didn't have, if might, you didn't have Colin Farrell and Gleason in there doing this, it would be a whole different movie. Right. That's very true. Well, yeah. All of his movies have had, like, superstars in them, right? And they're still not, right. like, box office blasts or whatever. What the fuck do you call them? Yeah. 
Blockbusters. I mean, the there you blockbusters, go. At the, at the end of the day, I guess right. all the blockbusters. Yeah. Blockbuster, all that really matters, blood, though, blood, blood. <laughs> as we know, all that really matters is margin. What's the margin yeah. that they make? They've put in it five million, it and depends, they make twenty DC. million. It depends. That, is that the same? That's all. That's all relative. If you put in twenty million and you make x amount more right it depends if you have a studio that's oh. going for movie for movie but then you have studios like Dude, a24 no. that go for it what yeah, i'm they're finding out there are differences is they're not just studios there's just independently wealthy financers out here that oh, just yeah. put money in that's been around for decades. it's just the studios I, I mean honestly now i'm starting to realize like the studios good fucking luck like pff, don't even bother because the studios got their own thing going on they do everything in their own little house they don't need everybody out on this outside called, they've already got their it's things. called superheroes that's yeah, and then they make those contracts for five years and they right. lock those writers and actors in and then yeah. they don't have any other movies to do and it's like a cesspool. So I can see how like he would have that in his mind because I, I can just picture these assholes talking about, oh, it's a lower tier movie. There's well, not going to be that much. He's and, also realistic you know. too. You know, this is like a movie about a friendship, a breakup of a friendship and it's just, it, there's, there's not, it's not an action movie. It's right. not, like right. there's not a large ensemble cast. Yeah, it's so, a deep so thinking see, movie. It's not it is, something it, easy it, to watch. It, yeah. yeah, right. So it's slow paced. Apparently, atmospheric isn't a trait that people want in movies. That's really confusing mm. to me. Anytime I describe I mean, it, a movie, it as depends like atmospheric. on who you ask. It depends right. on who you well, ask. Well, for sure. If you well, ask I'm some, talking about if so you like, ask some fuck face in you know middle America who doesn't know anything about movies, they're going to be like, I want to mm, watch Transformers. Mass audiences. Yeah. You know? That's that's yeah. the right. that's the audience that people go for. Well, sure. Right. The money. Yeah. The people well, that will just yeah. go yeah. give but, them but money. Definitely, it's not to say there's not a market for these things. No, there's a there's a lucrative market for these things. I'm telling everybody that I know to see this movie. People that I, I, am too. I normally hate when I recommend the movies, I'm like, yo, I know that you kind of dislike whenever I recommend you a movie because you watch it and it's too fucking weird for your taste, but watch this movie. It's about Irish people. Yeah. You're Irish. There's animals in it. Show it to your parents. <laughs> you like Fuck animals. you. Watch it during Christmas. This movie's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my girlfriend will never watch any of it. So I t I'll throw movies out all day, and she's like, I've never seen that movie. <laughs> it's like, yeah, fuck it. I'm not even going to bother. There's nothing to do here. <laughs> like, like I, I don't even know if she'll watch one like this with me. She'd probably just be like, I don't get this. You know? That's not a diss. That's just like how some people are with yeah. movies. That's yeah, funny. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm like... And not Yeah, I don't mean to come off negatively about that at all either, because like everyone has the, the right to like what they like. Like, that's... Totally fine. I'm just trying to defend myself because I feel like that was a slight yeah. attack on what I, the way I've been so positive on how this movie is is awesome. No, no, it's not. It, it it still is not. This isn't a blockbuster film. It's not designed for mass appeal necessarily. Although I think like maybe a surprising number of people might just get it because we all, I don't know. You all know that that feeling of being in a relationship on one side or the other where you couldn't, you didn't want, you didn't want to have somebody in your life anymore, but you didn't know how to make them stop. Or you were that person that was that somebody was trying to get rid of and you didn't want to go. And so just I think just the way the movie handles that without it being about some big love affair or some big scandal or or some personality trait that was like horrible that they couldn't stand. Yeah, or that it was an abusive relationship. You know, there there isn't that sense of drama in terms of what was bad about the relationship. It's no, just, you're right, because it's a very like uh that's a very normal situation, right? Friends right? It, don't yeah. talk. So, right? like so, yeah, it's right? not it's like, like, you know, I stabbed this person in the back by doing X, Y, and Z, right, right, and now right, we're not yeah, friends, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, you're yeah, always right. lying, and I had enough but, of your lies. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah like I hear that. what you're saying. It's more yeah. like, that's I, a good comparison to that. Doing my life. Yeah, the A hero yeah. and the A separation. It's like small family drama yes, shit. Yes, right? yes. That's another, that's maybe another reason why I feel some similarities yeah. with this. And and then with, with a separation and a hero, it's also about in it, very much in its setting, in its the the family and the the, and the dialogue and the acting and right yeah. right so that 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 actually I think there's a lot of overlap. Um, I mean, you got to admit, setting is everything, right? Because you yeah. figure the b three billboards, the setting there really that's true yeah, nailed it, that it really, that yeah. story, and then it's very you know, you small town hard, feel. I and, mean, we keep saying this, but with these movies, with his movies, like everything contributes almost equally to why it's so good. Like it's it's hard yeah. to think about. You know, even with like Kubrick movies, you're like, all right, the cinematography is the best in these movies. That's why I like them. Or like if I like right. Scorsese, I like the dialogue and the characters. But like his movies right. are just, or, I can't you know, pick. Macho uh, power fantasies. Right. Or that. Yeah, yeah. But like in these ones, <laughs> can you pick one? Like, I mean, specifically in Bruges and this one, I yeah. couldn't pick a best part. Like the story, the characters, the acting, uh, the scenery, uh, I, yeah, the cinematography, I just, I think, the music. Like what is yeah. the best part? There is none. It's the way they go together. 
it's fucking yeah. awesome because it's, it's all really, part of yeah. the storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. there's not that's, like that's, one thing yeah. that's more focused on than the other. It's I can just imagine them storyboarding this, thinking about it, talking about. It. I mean, right. I can just imagine it going on for pre-production for a while before yeah. they even get to like how they're gonna shoot it and do all the rest because. He just yeah, thinks it I all mean, through, like is, the setting, the place, the right, characters, right. the time, the you yeah. know how much long, how long we're gonna t go through the the motions within the film, and like those are all thought through in the script. Yeah, I yeah. would imagine. And then by the time they get the he works, he polishes that up so nicely that by the time they get to the rest of it, it just fucking it does it itself. I'm sure. And you get these actors on board, and they're like, "I fucking love this script. Let's do this." And then everybody's going into it. He, sl he like, slides them a script and done. says, "Hey, I wrote this for you." And he's like, "Thanks, Martin. I love you." <laughs> yeah, right, right. Like, I yes, know. I'm gonna nail this. I'm gonna I fucking know. nail this. <laughs> I know. I know. It must be great, right? Um, but but I would say, I mean, it's the same cinematographer as on Three Billboards and Seven Psychopaths. Same two oh, wow. actors. Like almost everyone he works with here, he's worked it's with his before. Team. It's his yeah. team. He's honing yeah. it in. He said during the interview with Taylor Swift, this is the only movie he's ever felt comfortable directing. Good for him. Yeah. He, he's, and you know what I really like about that is that it's like a normal way of, um, you know, that's how long things take to become a master. It mm -hmm. takes your life. <laughs> he's been doing this for a long he's fucking time. He's made four time. movies. And, and he's yeah. in his 50s. I mean, he's not but a he's young a man. a ton of plays. Ton of plays. I mean, I mean he's not guy, an old this guy, man. This guy's either, a though. worker. He's, I he's mean, not an old man yeah. either in this in this right. industry. But he he's takes his got, time. You know, in between yeah, movies, he yeah. takes he his does. time. He's not pumping yeah. him out, you know. And he doesn't yeah. seem to like. And that's what I liked about you can feel it when you're watching. There is no rush. Like he 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 spends every minute and every dollar and just makes it work perfectly. I don't know. I'm like gushing over this one. I am yeah. too. I, yeah. I, I, it's just such a good fucking story. I, and I think that's. Really what it, it proves, if you have a good story, the rest will follow. And, you know, if you don't, then you're just blowing shit up and you're riding around in helicopters. It. Yeah, which is also <laughs> Which fun. is fun. Come on. <laughs> you which ever is seen The Rock, us. DC? Come yeah, on. Which yeah, is great for a all, Sunday all the, all afternoon. All the Fast and Furious you know? films, you know. Yeah, yeah, I liked those somewhat. <laughs> yeah, they're fun when you forget them afterwards. Or when you're yeah. young. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Especially being younger. I, I mean, they're fun. I mean, I yeah. thought I was surprised that he never directed any of his plays. That was actually pretty surprising. Yeah, I, I just know nothing ah, about that world. You although know, that I, seems I like I a lot assumed, more work. Yeah, right. Plays. Well, well, like, not only that too, but you're putting on. Not only you, you're you're doing you you have a show every night or whatever for three months or whatever. Oh, so you're true. Not, you're not just true. you can't write anything else because you're fucking directing. Right, guys. right. So it, it so it sort of makes sense that there's even more of a complete separation there in some ways. I, and yeah, I, I don't know. I'm point. sure there are writer directors probably in Broadway too. I, like, oh um, yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about Broadway. Ma Ma Manuel Miranda, um, Lynn. Lynn Manuel Miranda. Miranda. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, he's a writer director. He, he I, I will know. He, I don't think he directed Hamilton even. I, he was, he was acting in it, but he wasn't necessarily directing it. So, so yeah. Oh no, so I'm thinking of somebody though. else. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was but, thinking of Damien Chazelle. <laughs> oh, ah. it's a bit different. It's kind yeah. of the same. Which one's he? Is he? He's the La La, La Land it? Whiplash. Oh uh, yeah, what is it? Is that okay. Babylon? It's Babylon. Yeah. Yeah. Getting, that looks it's interesting. getting mixed like reviews. Hollywood's golden age. Yeah, it looks good, but it's got mixed reviews. It's fucking yeah. long, apparently. It's like over three oh. hours long. Oh. oh, dear. Oh, boy. No, thank <laughs> you. So, um, yeah, not going to happen. Indulgent, maybe. So, again with the interview, he talks yeah. about how he writes a story. He surprises himself when he writes. So, yep. like, some people, apparently, they, they start with a good idea and they write around the idea. What he does is he starts with a feeling like he, he just got through a bad breakup. He didn't say what kind, but like he wanted to write it out because that's what he does. Mm -hmm. He like mm -hmm. has a, a very right. emotional experience and he's like, I'm going to utilize this to make yep. art. That's what yep. he does. Awesome. So he made this, characters, yeah. started the stories. He started from the beginning and then he, I don't even know how this works, but like he followed the narrative. The step by step yep. narrative where the of story characters like as he sort of he like wrote let it. one thing happen and then another yep. thing happened. Yeah. And then I mean, and and he was Ryan, surprised by he was surprised. Ryan continually tells me this. Like every week, he reminds me of this because I'm like, oh, well, I'm back to the outline. I don't know what I, I'm fucking lost. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen in the middle. You know, he's like, stop. Just start writing it. Don't. 
outline anymore if it's making you crazy, right? Like, and it's almost like that's, I think, the, how the, the best stuff comes out is when you, like, he's so good at just having his you free flow have thought to be at this talented. point. You have yeah, to be right. so but, like, talented. He's honed to be able it in so that. good that he can just fly through probably. And then he goes in and does all the, the restructuring. I mean, he has definitely. To. Yeah, it's the, awesome. Having a good idea and trying to write around the idea is for people who can't write, I have to imagine, or can't write as well. If you can start from zero and then have an awesome story by the end, that's amazing, I mean, right? Because, yeah, I mean, like, sure, I write the fucking yeah. story, and it sucks right. 100% of the time. Well, I mean, there's, there's, but there is, there's, there's different there's ways process, to approach it, I'm sure. Yeah, and there's, there's, there's process. There's all kinds of different ways. There's a lot of different types of process, too, yeah, like, right. you know, helps you figure out the structure. And then, honestly, when you start writing it, a lot changes, even though you had an outline. So, like, I think it's, it's just a, it's a just you figure out what works for you as a writer, and it, it doesn't always necessarily have to be like he does it. Um, yeah. But Ryan frequently says that's how he does it. He outlines, but then he just starts going, and you know the the story takes shape as it goes. So, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's great. I, I just love hearing that. But but it, he can it, just it's, like it's, go yeah, yeah, and that's it's it. interesting yeah. to hear that. <laughs> it's like, awesome. the, the, you know that that's what it started. The feeling he was like this is a breakup movie. That was what he started with. Is, right. right. And it was a bad breakup, and that's really seems to be the core of this, right? That mm. he's trying to just get at and circle around. Um, and so, or yeah, like just, I just like the idea that he's using those feelings in a different story. Yeah. Right. Like you know you're using those feelings to your advantage, but you're not necessarily having to do the same. Right, you're not, you're not right? Yeah, no, like, right. You're not talking about if let's say this happened to be a romantic breakup, um, right. and you know, who knows what it was and, and good for him. He doesn't have to say, but, um, but you're right. It could have been more like a, it, it's like, Oh, I could have just repeated the, the story that happened as it happened and then put my feelings there and people do that. That's uh, that. Oh yeah. And it works. Some, it and works. So, and that's another technique, yeah. right. From experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, it, but he is that, doing yeah. that essentially. Yeah. Right. He's I writing mean, from he the, is, the emotion. He's got, he's the emotion, writing from the experience the of the emotion. Somewhere. Right. Yeah. Right. And then and the, not, the, the not, characters, where the abstract portions come out. Cause that probably feels yeah. like a natural extension. If you're not just going to write word for word, what happened yeah. in the experience that you had, maybe. Right. Yep. I mean, I will say, as I've been trying to do this little thing on the side, it's you start there. You start with what you know. And then as you start a structure, you start to go, OK, now I can say this is not going to work. I'm going to move this. And, oh, I have a better idea to make this more you know, thematic. And this stuff just starts to fall into place as you go. But I can't imagine being able to do it as, as amazing as he is because I just feel like when you start to break down all the little components by themselves, you're like, Jesus Christ, there are so many subplots and so many little things that don't detract us from the overall story. And that's so hard to do, right? Like when you have those subplots that just divert your attention away from the main flow and then you're like, well, what the fuck was that whole subplot? Who cares about that relationship? None of that happens here. He's got all these little elements and they all make sense to the end goal. I love it. Yep. 100% agreed. So also on the way he writes, he writes the story first, completes the story, and then he does his own storyboards. That's awesome. He does the so stick those, figure things. Little stick figure. Little I like stick to figures. see those. Because he, he doesn't try to like, he doesn't think about how it's going to look while he's writing it. He wants the story to come through first. Yep. And then yep. when he's happy with the story, he sits on it and he's like, all right, how do we want this to look? And then he storyboards it. Yep. And what they did is they went to this island called Inishmore in Ireland. It's a real island. A lot of this wasn't there. They built a lot of this and they built, and they talked about how they did this with all the buildings, but they talked specifically about the bar since it was mm. in so much of the movie. They built it and mm. they filmed it, or sorry, they built it with the idea of how they would film it from the outside and also how they would film it from the inside. So like the door opened in the bar to the coast and that was intentional. And they put right. it like so in a location where it would be like the road would be along a ridge and with a great backdrop. And that was also intentional. So like they scouted nice. a location for this pub to be like the centerpiece of the movie with, you know, imagery. In it's really cool. Yeah. Isn't it? I mean, it must be cool just to like have the money. <laughs> like, yeah. There was not that much money in this movie. No, no, but you show up and you're like, we're Relatively gonna do speaking. this. Yeah. We're gonna you figure out where the like, thing is. Yeah, we're gonna like, build the house. We're, we're, we're gonna we're like, gonna that's all part of it, right? Yeah. It's great. It's cool. It is, is great. I'm starting to find more like, you know, things I like about movies now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. It only hey. took four and a half years. Yeah. You just have to you watch know, the whatever. really, really good one. You know how rare a good, a well-written movie is, TC? Yeah. It does, doesn't right. exist, basically. I know. It's, You've it's, watched it's all of them not. already. I, and you don't remember <laughs> any of them. You <laughs> fucking idiot. Shit. <laughs> I know. I couldn't tell you what we watched at this point. I, you might bring it up in conversation. Be like, I think I've seen that. Like, dude, yep. we saw it two weeks ago. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, all right, I got one last piece of trivia here. It's actually uh, a couple of pieces of trivia, but the animals. Jenny, yeah. I thought, so me and Naomi for the first half of the movie were arguing about whether or not the pony was a pony or a donkey, or it was a donkey oh, okay. or whatever. I thought it was right. a donkey in the beginning, but then they called it a pony in the movie, and I was like, wait a minute, is that a pony? Do I know less about ponies than I thought I did? <laughs> Are you a big pony guy? No, no I'm not. But I, it, was <laughs> it was a donkey. Pony. That's what it was I a thought. miniature donkey, right? Okay. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But they, he called it a pony in the movie. Right. Yeah. Sometimes that confused so. me. That, ca- that yeah. caused some confusion in the Kennedy household, is <laughs> all I'm you. trying Denny, to say. Denny's mind just fell no, apart. Me, like, no, 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 Naomi no, was arguing with me. I was like, that looks like a donkey. And she's like, she just called it a pony. And I'm like, I'm pretty no, sure it's a donkey. I, I, and she was I thought, like, it's a I pony. And then we started strangling yeah. each other across <laughs> each other from the couch, <laughs> as we do. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Speaking of not being it's able a to stand donkey. each other, it's a, it's a pony, pony. You fuck. <laughs> it's a donkey. Yeah, it was a donkey. 100%. But the donkey's okay. name was Jenny in real life, <laughs> and they had to uh, call it that name in the movie because it wasn't an actor. It wasn't. Believe it or not, that donkey wasn't a donkey actor. So they actually right. had to, uh, as you would with a human actor, donkey. you'd have to use their real name so they didn't right. get confused. Otherwise, the donkey would have oh, been wow. way more confused. Yep. That's funny. But it was a bad actor at Bit Colin Farrell. Very sad. Did it? Yep. Shit. Uh, they, had a, they had a donkey double, which I don't know why they didn't use that donkey instead. Apparently, right. Jenny was a beautiful donkey. That's why they used her. Oh, okay. Uh, like, she was very well kept. Because most of them are ugly as fuck. Apparently. I don't know. That, that donkey was cute <laughs> I don't even as know. fuck. I would let that donkey yeah. into my house. 100%. Hey, shit all over the place. <laughs> fuck it. Yeah. I'm not sure my cats would appreciate a donkey clopping. No, I don't think so. I don't think that would go over well with the cats. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't one of them like poop? <laughs> Well, it could be that. <laughs> they I mean, you can like, dislike hmm. and be covered in something at the same time, TC. <laughs> that's, that's a very good point. I didn't think about it like that. <laughs> uh, and so, on the opposite end, the horse in this movie was a very good actor. Um, oh, oh, really? They had this horse on set for, like, they had all the animals on, on those, <laughs> they filmed it on island. All the animals were there. Uh, they wrote a bunch of scenes in with a horse, but not that many. But the horse was acting so well that they built the horse into a lot more scenes. Oh, really? And there was actually a scene oh. where, I'm not sure I picked up on this. I don't know if you guys did, but the scene where the fingers were scattered around the house after mm. there was that right. whole drama thing. Like, I was confused by why the fingers were scattered. I was like, did he throw even more fingers on the thing? <laughs> but there was uh. apparently a shot of the horse, like, like moving his head and like, beckoning uh, Colin Farrell to oh, like go Colin around Colin. the hey, side hey, look, of the house. The donkey. Yeah. Something's did you guys notice that? Uh, no. There's apparently, no, I don't know how either. clear it is, but they said that they have a shot in the movie where the horse's head kind of like, like going moves to him around the side of the house, which uh. is where he finds the dead donkey. Um, huh. But they, he wasn't, the, the horse wasn't supposed to be in that scene, but they brought him in because he was a great, like they brought the horse He's in as many good. scenes as they could because of how good of a horse he was. <laughs> nice. It's cool. That's nice. That's I mean, those are the great yeah. little nuggets in filmmaking, right? When you're just like, hey, let's add the horse again. Fuck yeah, it. roll with Looks it. Looks great. Yeah. yeah. He's enjoying maybe, it. Maybe, We're enjoying maybe, it. Like, Guillermo, yeah. Guillermo de Toro needs to meet this horse. Maybe it would uh, make him like like horses again. Yeah, yeah. After his, his He's still bitter from uh, the Pan's oh, Labyrinth horse. bitter <laughs> about the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I still love him talking about Anytime horses. Anytime he goes to a screening, he's like, they got a fucking horse? How'd they get that thing to do that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't buy it. That's CG. There's, there's yeah, no way yeah. that's real. I've had my share of horses, and that fucking thing doesn't do that. Yeah, that's funny. So that's all I got. Wow, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a I lot. mean, we did a lot there. That was <clears throat> quite a bit of stuff. So this movie has not been watched that many times yet. It has an 8.1 on the IMDb top two, or, you know. It's got IMDb a 93 list. percent or something, right? In Rotten Tomatoes? No, it was at 97. 24,000. 97? Tomatoes, I wow. I thought it was, I thought last time I looked at it. I know, I think you're right. I have a feeling by the time this episode comes out, this movie is going to be on the top 250 because people are going to be watching it since it's now, on, it's very on recently HBO on Max. HBO. It's going to be, And yeah. it also, within the last week, got nominated for the most Golden Globes. And I'm, Sure that it's going to get nominated for the most Academy Awards as well. So who did they give? I guess Colin's character is the lead, and and Gleason would be supporting actor in this. That's a good question. Uh, let's see. Uh, I would think top billing is uh, Colin. Yeah, it'd be great if they both won. That'd be awesome because they both got nominated, right? So I assume. I, I mean, don't know. you're right. They're kind of even keeled, actually. 
Because it's like Collins without more. one. Collins more. He is way I think it's more just, of a. Co- I think Collins got the top billing, but he's well, not necessarily the more important character. So we no, have. All right, here we go. Here we go. Time for him. All right, ready That's, for this? Yeah. Right. We got. So Golden Globes are fucked up because they split the best picture by musical or comedy and drama. Those are like the two. Right. That's dumb. So this movie is a musical or comedy, which is fucking awesome. stupid, yeah. right? Yeah. There should be Way a drama because like that's yes. higher echelon, whatever. It's a yeah. musical or comedy? Yeah, it's stupid. That's right. stupid. What the fuck? If you laugh once in a movie, that's, that's a fucking comedy according to It's Golden also un- unfair to comedies huh? and musicals yep. to compete with this. This yep. is why yeah. I don't bother with the Oscars. Or Golden, well, yeah. Globes. Golden Globes yeah. is dumber than Oscars. This is why it's dumber than yeah. Oscars. All that because, shit's stupid. I mean, The Martian. I think Make the worst. Work. I mean, this is a pretty bad... I always have The Martian as the thing. It's like they got nominated for musical or comedy. The Martian, the sci-fi Ridley Scott movie with Matt Damon that is in right. no way either a musical or comedy. That's what it got nominated for. It's fucking stupid. That's so weird. Anyway. But it also got nominated for Best Director, Best Performance, Brendan Gleeson in a supporting role, and also Barry, so. Barry Keegan mm-hmm. okay. supporting role right there. So Barry uh-huh. Keegan is the, uh, the younger dude. Right. Well, good for him. Good for him. Do you guys recognize that guy? That guy is amazing in everything that he does. He was in Dunkirk. Really? I, he was in The Green Knight. Oh. He's been in a lot of good stuff. Best original score, Carter Burwell. I don't know. Uh, Colin Farrell, best performance in a motion picture, musical or comedy. Well, of course. Fucking terrible. That's stupid. Yeah. I missed the musical number at the end. There was a lot of dancing. They did the river dance thing. It was awesome. Uh, and then the best screenplay, Martin McDonough. He's going to win that oh, one. Oh, he should He's win He's going to win that one. That's a guarantee. Now, I just hope that it's not like, you know, us film nerds are like, it's amazing. And then the rest of the world's like, fuck this movie. Because you know how yeah. that shit goes. It's no. already got a 75% on audience score. So oh, oh. we're heading down. I follow this stuff pretty closely. <laughs> yeah. With awards and stuff. This is a pretty good, uh, happy medium to like what people like in terms of seeing things and actually liking them. And then also being you know, mm. artistic and having like merit in a lot of different technical ways and all that type of right. stuff. It really, okay. it's right there. Like it's, it's really right in there. Got it be all. Very surprised. There, he, he could, he's also got that sort of, he's got it coming to him because he didn't get it for three billboards. Yeah. And he should have, cause that so, year was so, shit for movies. And, right. So, yeah. yeah. Agreed. He's going to win it. And depending on when this episode comes out, we can congratulate him for winning. Good job, Martin. You won Best Picture and Best Director. I hope that happens. Yeah, he deserves it. Yeah. Absolutely. Top 250. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's here's a harder one. Here's a harder one. Best Martin McDonough movie. Ooh. Mm, No, I don't like that because these are different. I mean, everything is different, that's a cop John. Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to gonna say I also don't Good know. Good effort. <laughs> I, I don't know because the, the way I came in of this podcast is like I need more time with this one, which I'm excited yeah. for, right? But I feel like I've, I've had these feelings with movies before where I'm like very impressed by it. Like I... This is not a good comparison in terms of movie, but like the first time I watched Blade Runner 2049, there's a lot going mm-hmm. on in that movie and it's slow and I came out loving it, but I didn't understand a lot of it. And the more I watch it, the more I love it. And I feel like yeah. this movie might be the same kind of thing where even though it's sad and, you know, it's slow, I am excited to watch it again because I feel like mm. there's a lot mm. there and I didn't dislike like literally any of it. Like it was the entire thing was entertaining in a weird way, not like a blockbuster, like shock you in the face type of thing. But yeah, right. I was but, happy yeah. every second watching this movie. Yeah. 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 Even if it was a little bit upsetting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not going to be any more upsetting than that new show, Fleischman, whatever. That talk about the biggest downer you've ever seen on television. Uh-huh. Fleischman? Yeah, Fleischman. So John's copping uh, out. TC, do you have an answer for the best for what? Martin McDonough? I wouldn't even know where to start. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's a pretty stupid question. So sorry. I know. But so I, I, I could say Seven Psychopaths is, is a little bit below, but these other three films are just all great and, di- and slightly different, but still, you know, clearly his movies. But three billboards and in Bruges and and this one are all just like, I don't they're know, they're good. just all all pretty fantastic. Yeah, I loved three billboards. I'm just excited to see what he does next. Now I'm like, now I'm like, in, like he's one of my favorite writers now. Now I'm just gonna be watching for the next one. And well, dude, you should get into plays. TC, get into plays, man. Fucking find plays. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. 
I mean, honestly, it's got to like had, read so some the, of them. The Hangman just opened on Broadway. It, it was delayed because of COVID, but it oh. opened on Broadway in February. And oh, it got, he's like, just pumping out. Tony so he must just sit and write all day, every day. It's so awesome. He's probably getting mainstream, you know, a mainstream. Uh, Those tickets Broadway are probably pricey at this point. Now. Yeah. He's probably getting some right good now, money for the writing too. Yeah, you know that above the line money. But you're you're right. I mean, there, there's like a whole host of his plays now, which I mean, he's got a, a whole body of work there. More, I don't know how many he has, but quite a few. Um, Marty McDonald. He's got at least two two plays based on islands in Ireland. I mean, that's got to yeah. be a lot. He's just he's just good. Thanks, John. <laughs> Thanks, John. John is quiet. See, John is such a good podcast host. He quietly yawns now because yeah. he's gotten so yeah, much shit where he yawn. audibly yawns. He's quietly yawning now, but I can I see learned, He's learned. Been, yeah, thanks, I've been buddy. I've into submission for yeah. that. I'm sorry. Was that, You're a good boy, good. John. You're a good boy. Back. We need Thank to get you, you a cough a button, button, you know, so <laughs> you can right, hit yeah. the mute and then yawn okay. and then open it back up again like yeah. they do in radio. That's true. <laughs> you just can have that cough button. Yeah, the cough button. Sleep button or I I, I, maybe I, so I should have got everybody for Christmas the cough button. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably need it the most. All right. All noise over Guys, here. I feel like what? we've reached the point where we need to do something. No. What's no. that? We've descended into the sadness well where we need to get, we no. need to rip a band aid off, guys. Oh no, we're going into fucking, what's it we called? We need to watch the pianist. We need <laughs> to get past it. <laughs> no. no. I think we do. I feel like, like now I really is a good like time. Adrian Brody yeah, though, so I, Christ, I'm gonna be alright with it. But movie. still, get God, a, it's so a, get, sad. Gather the kids around the Christmas tree and watch this one. Uh, so, do you guys hard disagree? I feel like we need to do it anyway. No, we can at least say we're watching it right let's now. Let's get it over with. We need to go over with. Also, so yeah, I'll say get it over with. we'll get it over with. But also, I don't want to watch it in the week between Christmas and New Year's. Well, right? we're so. taking a break, right? I mean, TC's traveling all next week. Oh, you are. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, right. we're going so, so, like, so the, the, so let's start the New Year's off with the pianist. Great. Let's, let's like, <laughs> we can still... Hey, New Year's resolution, never watch this movie again. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Never watch it. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Adrian Brody. I like you. I like you, but that movie's tough. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pretend that I'm not even going to have to watch it for a while, yeah. so it'll be good. What we'll we could do Christmas. also is we have a good bucket of movies now. Yep. We could watch something else to start the New Year no, off. No, right? we just got to get it over with. Okay. Hey, and we can be, put it in yeah. the queue. Let's just get it over with. That's fine. We could always shift them around or something. Yeah. Let's start the right. 2023 off. It's so we don't have to ruin year. the listeners' oh, no, new year, we, we, but we, we can we ruin ours. About the, the, we were talking about <laughs> since it's award seasons, if we if we can start getting into some of the, the international films again, because we love to do that. Oh, yeah. So. Fuck that. Let's watch the international ones. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I go. watched we're a good. fucking amazing one, and it's, yeah. I got a list. We can do right. that. Fuck the, fuck the penis. Let's keep Yay. pushing it off. We'll never watch another list movie again, fellas. All Don't right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah, let's do that. Copy that. All right. Later, dudes. All, All right. right. Take care, guys. Yeah, yeah. So John had some further thoughts, so I'm going to stitch those thoughts in. We recorded a couple weeks later at the end here, so that's coming up right now. Uh, all right, what do you guys think? Is that yeah. good? We did all the McDonough stuff. Now we've watched all. Well, I wanted to talk. Oh. I still want to talk about Banshees. Okay. I don't know if you can if you can fold this in at all, just in terms of but this film. Is all right, like, watch this, John. Watch this. What? All right, I folded it in. There you go. Ah, uh, you're awesome. You're oh yeah, what's this? Magician. Banshees. We're yeah. gonna do Banshees. Wait, we're right, Banshees. Right. Where we're putting this in Banshees. Yes. Oh. I tried to tell you, goddamn. Oh, I, I like thought... texted you. I wanted to talk about Banshees. But I we said it like this... five fucking times. Have you not been paying attention? I thought we were doing it in relation to this movie. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. I, I guess it would make sense to put out the thing that you had thoughts afterwards before the episode where we talk about it initially came out, right? That doesn't make yeah, any I sense. Know. True. Logically, right, that's right. not well, linear. We haven't talked. That episode hasn't come out yet. So, True. right. All right. We let's go. We haven't even done. So, Hurry it up, John. You've got the air. You've got the floor. All right. All right, we've got we've got our two characters, <laughs> Padrack and Colm, yes. right? So Padrack's the Colin Farrell character, and Colm is Brendan Gleeson, right? So the the somehow this this film just stuck with me, and I kept thinking about it a lot. And and I I think one of the things um, that I was thinking about in terms of the the conflict that they have, where like Padrick has to fight, like he can't back down. He can't back down in the because to back down would to be to admit that being nice isn't good enough, isn't worth it. Like just being a nice guy. Like it's basically his whole way of life is under assault like this. By by his best buddy telling him that him just being nice isn't interesting, that this is why he can't let it go. Right? Because if he does, he has to admit that his entire being, him, who he is, is is like is not enough. 
is is like it, and and that that's really profound. I thought, um, and and the other side of it, it's something that this film could have easily done too, which which doesn't happen, is Colm could have just beat the shit out of him or something. But Colm recognizes too that he's a nice guy. He doesn't deserve this. He actually sees the he doesn't necessarily not see the value in that either. Um, and so that was something that doesn't happen in this film. So Colm doesn't know how to make him stop either. And he, and he then gets to this, basically all he can think about is like self-harm then. Because <laughs> he doesn't have, what, what is his other option? His other option would be to attack Hadrak. So to me, that, that just made the film a lot more meaningful in the sense of where I, has, I wasn't thinking on first watch about how stuck Padrick is in terms of why he has to not let this go. Because if he does, it's, it's everything he is. He's a nice guy. He likes to go and talk about things. That's him. Um, so to me, I, I don't know. I just thought that was really impressive about this film to just be able to focus just on that. Um, and then the, the other thing that seems to happen as the film goes along is Colm smirks like towards the end. Like as they're sitting there after his house has been burned down, he's like smiling a bit. Is he? He's enjoying. It, it, this is giving his life meaning. This feud. This conflict is is adding something, is giving him a sense of meaning in his life, I think. Because Patrick like, is interesting now. He's like, hey, this. at least you burned my right. house down. That's something. Right. But this is something. This conflict is like something something meaningful. It feels meaningful. And that's where you almost think about the, the analogy to the Civil War or whatever, or, or these kinds of like ongoing conflicts that happen in terms of they there there's these fundamental differences that you can't let go in, in the sense of there's these different religions. Like, like you can't just say to somebody who really believes something you're wrong. Like you can't, you can't just, that's who you are. You, this is like, and that's often the way it is for people of a, when you have faith in something, you can't just accept that somebody else is saying that you're wrong, that, that you're, what you're doing is invalid or the way you're going about your whole life is wrong. You can't let it go. So there's that part of it. And then, then there's the accidental things that happen along the way like like his his pony eating you know eating the finger and choking and dying these things happen they don't mean for it to happen but it's going to happen and then that escalates the conflict right and and so then it you just end up in this like never ending struggle um and and that's the way that you know when when Colin's saying like well some things are best never to end sort of he's talking about this like here they are they're stuck he's never going to back down and and say like yeah i'm i'm just nice and that's not good enough um so now now the fight's on, sort of. Um, anyway, so those are just my thoughts about the film. I just, I don't know. I, I just really enjoyed thinking about Thanks, it. Thanks, John. Now I got to watch the movie again. God damn it. Yeah, now you got to figure <laughs> out where to edit it in, too. Jeez, right, good right. luck, bud. Sorry. Yeah, hey, how much more work can I make Denny yeah, do? Uh, we're just going to, uh, uh, right, but does any of that make uh, sense? It I does. Mean, yeah. No, no, no. It, it all checks yeah, out. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take I, the I, piece I, of chewed gum that that was and stick it to the end of the hot dog. Shit. That was the, uh, <laughs> the podcast initially. <laughs> well, that'll be good. That's some good eating oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I put it, Denny. Oh, God. But the, that's so oh, marvelous. shit. I'm going to put it right into the seat. You know, it's just going to sit what, there. What, what's so amazing about this film, <laughs> like, like uh, compared to like, you know, RRR we watched, which is just so over the top crazy. This is so small. This is about like two people and their friendship in a in an island that where nobody does anything with their lives or whatever, and and it's so small in its scope, and yet it's just I don't know. It's just really at the same time really profound in that sense and very like thought provoking. I think that's what's like really amazing. You can't about reference this film. the movie that you watched after I'm this. Right? In the, in the bleep it. Yeah, you can bleep it. All right. Come on, people can guess what it is. is. Come on, anyway, that's we watched anyway, a movie so with more I, than two people in it. Everyone, believe it or not. Yeah, That's yeah, right. right. It was, no, actually, it was tens of tens two of two. people. Tens, many. There were many. <laughs> One too many. One Wait, what? Two. All right. Anyway, thanks, guys. Uh, I just wanted to get that out. I like that. Thanks, thanks John. Right. No, honestly, that, I like that it makes too, me, John. That was good. That makes me. Yeah. I'm closer now. Oh, I'm definitely going to rewatch that one, and I'm closer to rewatching it now after that. So. Yeah, I have to rewatch it too. Yeah. So. Sweet. All right. All right so this stuff. is the end of the episode here. So. Finally. Goodbye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Good to know ya. Well, I wanted to talk. I still want to talk about Banshees. Okay. I don't know if you can if you can fold this in at all, just in terms of but this film. Was all right, like, watch this, John. Watch this. What? All right, I folded it in. There you go. Ah, uh, you're awesome. You're oh yeah, what's this? Banshees. We're yeah. gonna do Banshees. Wait, we're Banshees. Right, right. Where we're putting this in Banshees.
Yes. Oh. I tried to tell you, goddamn! Oh, I, I thought, texted you. I wanted to talk about banshees. I said it like this. five fucking times. Have you not been paying I attention? I thought we were doing it in relation to this movie. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. I, I guess it makes sense to put out the thing that you had thoughts afterwards before the episode where we talk about it initially came out, right? That doesn't make yeah, any I sense. Know. True. Logically, right, that's right. not well, linear. We haven't talked. That episode hasn't come out yet. So, True. right? All right. We let's go. We haven't even done. So, Stitch hurry it up, John. You've Stitch got the air. You've got the floor. All right. All right, we've got we've got our two characters, <laughs> Padrack and Colin, right? Yes. So Padrack's the Colin Farrell character, and Colin is Brendan Gleeson, right? So somehow this this film just stuck with me, and I kept thinking about it a lot. And and I I think one of the things that I was thinking about in terms of the the conflict that they have, where Padrick has to fight, he can't back down. He can't back down in the because to back down would to be to admit that being nice isn't good enough, isn't worth it. Like just being a nice guy, like it's basically his whole way of life is under assault like this, but by, by his best buddy telling him that him just being nice isn't interesting, that this is why he can't let it go, right? Because if he does, he has to admit that his entire being, him, who he is, is, is not enough. And that, that's really profound, I thought. And, and the other side of it, it's something that this film could have easily done too, which, which doesn't happen, is Colm could have just beat the shit out of him or something. But Colm recognizes too that he's a nice guy. He doesn't deserve this. He actually sees the value. He doesn't necessarily not see the value in that either. Um, and so that was something that doesn't happen in this film. So Colm doesn't know how to make him stop either. And he, and he then gets to this, basically all he can think about is like self-harm then. <laughs> Because he doesn't have what what is his other option? His other option would be to attack Padrak. So to me, that that just made the film a lot more meaningful in the sense of where I has I wasn't thinking on first watch about how stuck Padrak is in terms of why he has to not let this go. Because if he does, it's it's everything he is. He's a nice guy. He likes to go and talk about things. That's that's him. Um, so to me, I I don't know. I just thought that was really impressive about this film to just be able to focus just on that and then the the other thing that seems to happen as the film goes along is colm smirks like towards the end like as they're sitting there after his house has been burned down he's like smiling a bit is he's he? enjoying it, it, this is giving his life meaning this feud this conflict is is adding something is giving him a sense of meaning in his life i think because he's like, because Patrick is interesting now. This. He's like, hey, at right. least you burned my house down. That's something. Right. But this is something. This conflict is like something, something meaningful. It feels meaningful, and that's where you almost think about the the analogy to the Civil War or whatever, or these kinds of like ongoing conflicts that happen in terms of they there there's these fundamental differences that you can't let go. In in the sense of there's these different religions. Like like you can't just say to somebody who really believes something you're wrong. You can't just, that's who you are. You, this is like, and that's often the way it is for people of, when you have faith in something, you can't just accept that somebody else is saying that you're wrong, that you're, what you're doing is invalid, or the way you're going about your whole life is wrong. You can't let it go. So there's that part of it. And then, then there's the accidental things that happen along the way. Like, like his, his pony eating, you know, eating the finger and choking and dying. These things happen. They don't mean for it to happen, but it's going to happen. And then that escalates the conflict. Right. And, and so then it, you just end up in this like never ending struggle. Um, and, and that's the way that, you know, when, when Colin's saying like, well, some things are best never to end sort of, he's talking about this, like here they are, they're stuck. He's never going to back down and, and say like, yeah, I'm, I'm just nice and that's not good enough. Um, so now now the fight's on, sort of. Um, anyway, so those are just my thoughts about the film. I just, I don't know. I, I just really enjoyed thinking about it. Thanks, John. Now I got to watch the movie again. Yeah, yeah now yeah. you got to figure out where to edit it in, too. <laughs> Jeez, right, good right. luck, bud. Sorry. Yeah, hey, how much more work can I make Denny do? Uh, yeah, we're just going to... Uh, does uh, that make sense? Yeah. I it mean, does. I don't know. No, no, yeah. no. It, it all checks out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the piece of chewed gum that that was and stick it to the end of the hot dog that was the uh, the podcast initially. Well, that'll be good. And that's some good eating there. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, I hate when you put it, Denny. Oh god. But the, that's so oh shit! That, I'm gonna put it right into the seat. You know, it's just gonna sit there. What's so amazing about this film compared to like you know we watched, which is just so over the top crazy. This is so small. This is about. 
two people and their friendship in a in an island that where nobody does anything with their lives or whatever and and it's so small in its scope and yet it's just i don't know it's just really at the same time really profound in that sense and very like thought provoking i think that's what's like really amazing you can't about reference the movie that you watched I after this i'm gonna bleep, bleep it in the review I'm bleeping bleeping it. It. All right, come on it. All right. people can All guess right. what it is come anyway, on that's right anyway we so, watched the movie I, with more than two people in it everyone believe it or not yeah yeah <laughs> right it, no actually it was tens of two <laughs> tens people. of twos <laughs> many there were many <laughs> one too many one. wait what anyway thanks, All right. i just wanted to get that off thank you. I like All that. Right. thanks john i no, like honestly, it too john that was good yeah. That makes me, I'm closer now. Oh, I'm definitely going to rewatch that one, and I'm closer to rewatching it now after that. Yeah, so. I have to rewatch it too. So, yeah. All right. Good Sweet. Stuff. All right. So, this is the end of the episode here. So, Finally. Goodbye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Good to know ya. Stop them.